It's the 3rd of March 1977. It was the peak of the feverish Australian summer. And simultaneously, something else would reach its climax. ABBA was about to go on stage in Sydney, Australia for their very first live concert overseas. And it was a dangerous affair. Heavy rain was pouring down, there was electricity all around them and bugs would be filling the stage. Frida would actually be falling down at one point, but they wanted to go out there, they just had to. For almost 30,000 people had waited for this very moment for months. Australia was in ABBA fever and this would go down in history as ABBA mania. Okay, so today we are diving into ABBA's 1977 concert tour that brought them through Europe and all the way to Australia. We will be taking a look into the rehearsals for the shows, the music, song selections and sequence and we will then be going on a journey with ABBA from city to city, from country to country and collect all those memories. But this time we have even more than memories and stories this time around, the lack of recordings from previous tours was certainly made up for. One of the biggest treasures that got out of this tour was an entire concert documentary film about the movie. And there is much more. So we will also be talking about all the recordings that were professionally done, as well as all the rare recordings that were captured by fans, either on tapes or with private cameras. And first of all, we are going back in time a little further to explore how all of this could have happened. Well, there are several factors, but first and foremost, it happened through the music. There it was, simple and catchy, you could sing along, yet you could listen to it forever, since it was so complex at the same time, with many details to explore. What was equally unexpected was the amount of songs and videos that were suddenly just there. How could they do this? And as unexpected as the music itself was ABBA's visual appearance. They have sent music videos. There they were, all of a sudden, from out of nowhere. This band from Sweden that was shimmering across television screens in Australia. Videos in color, rhythmically edited to the music itself, ingeniously done by director Lasse Hallström, and beautifully performed by ABBA themselves. Who were they? There was a strong mystic surrounding them. Nothing was really known about their persona. Are they even real? People were fascinated by ABBA. Their music videos were played over and over again. They just had to visit Down Under in person. And exactly that was organized in March 1976 almost exactly to the date of their first Australian concert one year later. By that time in 1976, ABBA had been all over the charts in Australia with their latest singles SOS and Mamma Mia, as well as the compilation album The Best of ABBA, and they were just about to release their newest single Fernando. The music video would also be shown constantly on TV for many weeks. On this very first visit to Australia, ABBA simply went for the usual obligations interviews, TV shows and an entire TV special that easily overtook TV ratings from the 1969 Moon Landing. The tie-in compilation by the same name was completely sold out. Already during this visit, ABBA was faced with the intense devotion of fans who crowded streets, hotels and airports just to see them. Agneta said, When we stepped off the plane in Melbourne, I looked at Frida. Her eyes were filled with tears, just like mine. That's how moved we were by the reception. In one of the interviews, they already spoke about plans to visit Australia again for a concert tour and it seems they were contemplating to return in November 1976 already. 
if we we coming on tour here to Australia yeah. probably in November and uh, we're going to bring four or five keyboard players four or five keyboard players yeah well we need that because that's yes. a that's a part of, of the things, you know, piano and organs. And, and that's, that's a concert tour, is it, Frida, in, in yes, November? Yes, it is, in November, hopefully. Oh, that's yeah. good. As we now know, that was exactly the time when their next album, Arrival, was released, so the tour was slightly pushed back so they could promote the album on TV all over Europe and even in the United States. And just towards the end of these promotional trips, in December 1976, ABBA started rehearsals for their next concert tour at Glen Stereo and continue to rehearse in January 1977 at Europa Film Studios. We actually got to see glimpses of these rehearsals on film in recent years. Snippets were spread across the documentary about the movie Looking Back, which was released on the DVD Special Edition and Blu-ray version. And an extended look of three minutes was screened in 2011 at the ABBA World Exhibition in Sydney. Even more fascinating is the fact that an entire rehearsal show was recorded on tape on the 7th of January 1977 at Glen Studio. Now before we take a look into this rehearsal tape, let's go through the songs that were picked for ABBA's 1977 live shows. In chronological terms, from their first two albums, there are only three songs left in the shows by this point. He Is Your Brother is the only one from their debut album, as well as the first two songs from Waterloo, the title track, and Sitting in the Palm Tree of all the songs. Perhaps that one was chosen for its summer vibes, and judging from this photo, it was performed with a palm tree on the big screen. From their third album, they carried over all the songs that were also performed on their previous tour except for Hey Hey Helen and including Mamma Mia. So Long was not performed in Europe and in Australia they incorporated a snippet of the Glenn Miller jazz standard In The Mood into the coda of So Long. And finally, from their most recent album Arrival, virtually every song was performed in concert except for My Love My Life and the title track Arrival. Their single Fernando was also included in the setlist and performed with a reprise of an audience sing-along. But it wouldn't be an ABBA concert if they wouldn't include brand new songs written exclusively for the show. If you were attending one of these concerts, you'd get to witness no less than five songs that you have never heard before. First of all, there was a number midway through the show called I Am An A, where all four were sitting down with Bjorn and Benny on acoustic guitars, where each member had their own verse to introduce themselves. The song was never recorded in the studio, and the live version was never officially released anywhere. Towards the end of the show, they performed four brand new songs as part of a mini-musical called The Girl with the Golden Hair. The short story was about a girl wanting to become famous as a musician, succeeding, and then starting to realize that she is trapped in fame. Agneta and Frida were playing the same character, which kind of symbolized the conflicting ambiguity that the character is trapped in. This concept and the songs would also be recorded for their next studio album as the finale, only Get on the Carousel remained a live track and was not included on the album. And in fact, one of the songs, certainly the one that turned out to be one of ABBA's signature tracks, was already previewed in a Swedish report in December 1976 by Björn and Benny as one of their most recent compositions. To put together a mini-musical format into a pop concert is something that Björn and Benny are not really convinced of nowadays but I can just give you a personal anecdote. When I was on holidays a few years ago and got into a conversation with a girl, she told me about one of her favorite groups, the Swedish heavy metal band Ghost, and how much she loved their song I am a marionette. She thought it was a unique track until she found out with surprise that it was written and recorded by ABBA. I told her about the real origins that they have included it as part of a mini-musical during their concert tour and she was absolutely thrilled with that idea 
she said it was full of genius and creativity and how excited she would be if her favorite musicians would do something like that in a concert. That was a really refreshing perspective even for me. And whatever the attitude, the concept showed that Björn and Benny were already eager and ready to break out of the usual formula to do something more and something bigger. It certainly is no coincidence that one year earlier Björn and Benny already wrote the melody for Anthem, a song that would later become a signature tune from their first full-length musical Chess in 1984. Even parts of the brand new song for the tour, I Am An A, would be reused for another famous song from Chess, namely for the chorus of I Know Him So Well. In 1978, after the tour and mini-musical, Björn and Benny were still convinced to produce a full-length musical production for that year, perhaps even with Agneta and Frida as leading roles. In 1980, they had the idea to create a musical or concept album set on New Year's Eve. What remained of this idea somewhat evolved into the Super Trooper album. And here we go full circle with 1976 and parts of that musical melody of Anthem, which were first used in one of the songs on this album, Our Last Summer. So we see, once they were hooked with the idea of a musical, writing melodies in that vein, they always went back to it somehow. And it all had its origins in their 1977 concerts amid some of their greatest pop songs. The setlist was generally sequenced like this, with the first three songs performed back to back in a medley. The actual concert started with the sound of a helicopter before leading into Tiger, directly referencing Ava's artwork for their latest album, Arrival. Apparently, the sound of the helicopter was extremely loud. For the Australian outdoor concerts, the helicopter sound was replaced with a longer introduction of Tiger. Now, if we take a look at the very special rehearsal tape that is slumbering in the archives, the setlist is more or less the same, with some songs being switched in sequence and two songs not included yet, Intermezzo No. 1 and I Am An A. There are also some minor changes in terms of performances. On I've Been Waiting For You, Benny actually plays the piano intro of I Wonder Departure, which is musically quite an interesting combination and the mini-musical is slightly different in its narration, storyline and some of its lyrics. Especially the song I Wonder Departure is completely different, telling the story of doubts and fears about entering into a relationship with a man. The chorus starts with the words, so simple, it's frightening. All of this information and more details can be found in Karl Magnus Palm's revised edition of ABBA, The Complete Recording Sessions. At the end of the rehearsal tape, Björn actually says, thank you very much, we've done a double LP here today. Well, wouldn't it be nice? In fact, ABBA did much more rehearsals than actual concerts, and it only shows how hard they were working to perfect their shows. They rehearsed them every day for over two months, and then went on tour through Europe for just two weeks, and one month later through Australia, for another week and a half. Frida said, I'm trembling with fear that we cannot fulfill the huge expectations of the fans, even though we already have rehearsed our shows almost daily since November. At the end of January 1977, ABBA was ready to embark on the first part of their tour, which got them through 17 concerts in 14 European cities. Once again, Germany was the country where they did the most concerts, with five shows being played in Berlin, Cologne, Essen, Hannover and Hamburg. This was equaled with the amount of concerts in the United Kingdom, where they also played five concerts in Birmingham, Manchester, Glasgow and two shows at the Royal Albert Hall in London. 12,000 people were attending those final two shows in London, but it was reported that they had pre-orders of three and a half million tickets. This is even more remarkable if you remember our last episode when on their previous tour through Europe many concerts didn't even sell out 
and some had to be cancelled. This only shows how much they evolved musically and how they conquered the world with their music. Now, with this amount of ticket pre-orders, they could have played almost 600 shows at the Royal Albert Hall. But ABBA played two. On this tour, their live band consisted of many players that also played on ABBA's studio recordings, and they brought three female backing singers with them, from which Lena Anderson had been working together with Björn and Benny for quite a few years. The first European concert was in Norway, Oslo. There was a press conference without ABBA. They were actually slain the day before. And during the concert, they sang the first verse of a traditional Norwegian song a cappella, which was performed in tribute to Princess Sonja, who was attending the show with Prince Harald. The song was a favorite of hers, and she actually recorded it in 1976. Also in the audience were Björn's parents, who only had the chance to meet him after the concert was done. From all reviews of this tour, I think the following quote says a lot. They gather the generations in anonymous joy. It is the first time in the history of entertainment music that children and mother and grandfather understand each other's tastes. ABBA has always been about diversity in many ways and their audience is no different. That is some pretty remarkable achievement. We also see this diversity of people in a TV report after their first concert in the UK when ABBA played at the Odeon in Birmingham. This seems to be one of the few TV reports from the European part of the tour and it gives some fascinating insights into the entrance area but also into audience reactions immediately after the concert. Fantastic! Marvelous! Brilliant! Brilliant! Unbelievable! All the way from Bristol! Sure? Yeah, absolutely! Fantastic! <laughs> How, how did you like the show tonight? Fantastic. Bloody great. It was Good fantastic. Show tonight. You liked it? Yes. You like the music? Yeah. In the report, there is no actual footage from the concert, but there is something. When the security is interviewed in the entrance area, we can hear a snippet of I Wonder Departure in the background. Uh, watching their show, isn't that? Yes. Uh, do you think they could have sold more seats if they stayed longer? Um, the last I heard, they had 52,000 applications for their tickets. And actually, that's about it when it comes to official audio material from all of these European shows. We never got any official release, but there are some fascinating recordings, both from the audience perspective, but also professionally done. So before we go on journey with ABBA through Australia, let's take a look at all the recordings of these European shows. First of all, we have an audio bootleg recording from the show in Cologne, but only some rare snippets, mainly speeches, the song I've been waiting for you and the reprise of Fernando. We have one song from the Amsterdam show, I'm a marionette, and another bootleg recording is the complete concert from Hamburg. This is the only European show that we have in its entirety. Another German concert was captured in another form. We have silent, filmed footage of almost seven minutes from the concert in Essen, an absolutely fascinating treasure. A very brave fan took his Super 8 camera and filmed some of the show, which you can watch here on YouTube. And now for something really intriguing because something similar also exists from the shows at the Royal Albert Hall, but it was never released so far. The YouTube user ABBAFAN09 captured footage from the 1977 Albert Hall, but unfortunately hasn't been able to transfer the material since it was filmed in 16mm cine format. So if anyone is out there with some advice on this, Please let us know in the comments below. We can only hope that ABBAFAN09 will still be able to put time and effort into making this happen. Because this is some very historic footage. When it comes to professional recordings from Europe, there are rumors that the German concert from Cologne was actually recorded by the radio station VDR for a later broadcast but wasn't allowed to do so in the end. It's not entirely clear 
if they actually recorded the show, if they wanted to record it, or if it happened at all. We never got any broadcast, but perhaps a recording is slumbering in their archives. What we do know for certain is that another European show was recorded, and again, it's the famous Royal Albert Hall shows. According to Lasse Hallström, these concerts were even filmed on 16mm, so that they would have an idea of how and what to film in Australia. The Albert Hall story isn't quite over yet. In 2014, when we finally got the Wembley Live album from 1979, one article mentioned that there will be an exclusive digital release of 15 minutes from the 1977 Royal Albert Hall concerts. Nothing more was known or has been confirmed, and of course it never happened. But we see there are recordings locked away, even from these European shows, but nothing has ever seen the light of day. We are much better served with Australia, so let's join ABBA now on their tour Down Under. 